this is the interesting thing about real estate. It is one of the only industries I know where you don't have to have advanced training, advanced degree. The barrier of entry is super, super low. It, you know, you can for a thousand bucks, maybe two thousand, you can kind of pay for your dues, educations, all that for a year. So like very, very low entry when you consider any other business to get into. Um, and, and the rewards are huge. If you do it right, you can get to six figures within a year. So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, you are in for a treat. I just got to interview Dan Lesniak. He's a great friend of mine. I met him years ago at an Ironman training camp. And the, you know, he's on here as a huge real estate agent. He's got huge teams, does all sorts of stuff. But we talked about fun stuff today. We talked about if you're starting as an agent, how to go get those listings. We talked about how he balances his work life of having a wife and kids and a business, but how he still you know, does Ironman events and did a 50, 50 mile race and how he, how he manages how to fit it all in and build his business at the same time. He is also, you know, get one of the most fun social media accounts I follow out there. He's on there interviewing, you know, Gary B and uh, all these, you know, Grant Cardone and all these big people and all these big classes that he does. And, uh, and anyway, as you listen, there's going to be a ton of information on here about how to succeed at life, along with how to succeed as an agent. And if you've been around for a long time, there's a lot of tips on how to take those existing clients and make sure that you get more leads and get more successful with them. And if you're new, how to get started. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Hello, real estate rock stars. Welcome back. This is Aaron Amuchastegui, today's host of the Real Estate Rockstar Radio Podcast. Today, I get to interview a great friend of mine, Dan Lesniak. You know, Dan and I met a few years ago at one of the funniest experiences. We were at an Ironman training camp out in Florida. It was a totally new event to me. Dan at the time had done a few of these things before I got to learn a lot from him. And then we also found out at the same time, we both had a love of real estate. Um, you know, we get to talk to Dan about all sorts of things today, but if you go find him on social media later, you will see all sorts of content that he's pumping, he's pumping out. He is building a, just a huge real estate team out in Arlington, Virginia. It has lots of hacks and fun things that, he, that he's doing. So I cannot wait to get started talking. So, the, so Dan, how's it going, man? Great. I am excited to be back on the show. I've been on a couple times before, but this is my first time being on with you. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, you've been interviewed a couple times by, by Pat Hyben and the, when was the last time you were on the show? It was over a year ago, so it's been a while. So it's, this is a good time to, to come back on and, and do some updates. Yeah, that will be so awesome. So, the, so, so right now your team, you're based Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. If we were just going to jump into like what makes the D.C. area, you know, unique or when it comes to real estate, what's the real estate environment like out there? What's, what's the average prices, things like that? Yeah, so the, the median home price in our area is about 500K. It's, you know, I think what makes this market unique is it's, it's very, very, very stable, right? It has the federal government here. No matter who's in power, Democrats, Republicans, people have jobs. Even, even when, I, you know, I remember 10, 11, 12 years ago, like Lehman Brothers, financial crisis, all that stuff was going on. And yeah. there was double digit you know, uh, unemployment nationwide. And like, I don't think our area ever got to above 5%. So people had jobs, even, even during the worst financial crisis that we've experienced in our lifetime, people had jobs. You know, you heard about some, some places, real estate markets going down 50, 60%. I know smart guys like you were, were, were buying in all, probably a lot of those places coming yeah. in off the sidelines. Uh, we didn't have those kind of buying opportunities in this market. It, it really only went down by like 10%. So it, it's just a good, stable, steady market. You probably don't get the huge upswings that you do in some of these other markets, uh, it, it, but, but you don't get the huge downswing. So you're kind of always chugging along at two, three, 4% growth, which is, which is good and sustainable for the, the job market and economy. And, 
I think it, it presents another challenge that we, we tend to have a lack of inventory. Yeah. So that, that's something I've, I feel like I've dealt with my entire real estate career for almost a decade now is how to, how to help buyers get homes when they're competing and there's just not a lot on the market. So that's, that's my take on the DC market and you know, what, what I've been dealing with the last eight years or so. That is a great summary, man. There, there are very few places in the U S that during those downturns had the security like that. And I think people could actually kind of take that advice and try to find places you know, near their own market where there's stability. One of the places I invest a lot of time right now is you know, near army bases, right? Because army bases tend to, you know, kind of beat some of those ups and downs too. They don't always have a lot of gain, but they have a lot of stability. Um, and when the market crash was first, first happening, my wife and I were living down in the central coast of California so, you know, near San Luis Obispo, and we heard about all these foreclosures happening, but, but San Luis Obispo was a very beautiful, like college town and the, yeah, and they probably had like 10% price changes instead. And then when we moved up to Sacramento, California, where the explosion of the foreclosure crisis happened, prices were at 30, 40 cents on the dollar. And uh, we really got to see that. So yeah, I, I bet you face some kind of unique challenges to be able to compete in a, uh, in a, in a, in a stable market, you've got to set yourself apart and you've got that kind of lack of inventory. Um, what is the, what's the biggest way you try to attack that lack of inventory? Yeah, two, two ways really. One is we are really, really good at marketing for, for sellers and trying to find homes before they come in the market for our buyers. So that can be through, you know, getting, getting the listings ourselves or, or, hunting for them, you know, with sellers, it can be through networking with other agents. So we're just, we're always trying to find the deal before it's on the market. And then two, can we get our buyers to win out when it does come on the market and, and not necessarily uh, by being the highest priced offer. Right. And I think the biggest thing to do there is to like really study and know the contract and, and don't just go through and check the standard contingencies, the standard, terms that are you know recommended by the realtor association or, or that, that people have been doing for 20 30 years because if you if you just go to the default on all of that then you're left with one thing to compete on and that is price all right and i, and, uh, I think the key to this is educating the buyer up front that hey this contract's 20 pages 30 pages however long it is in your market here are some areas that you can choose right like do you need a financing contingency if you're pre-approved with a great lender, right? And, and you've done all the work up front. Uh, do you need the appraisal contingency? Or, or if you do, you know, how, how, how much can you shorten it? Or, or can you alter it so that if, if it, it comes in low, you, you take on some of the risk instead of it all being on the seller, right? Like there's, you know, a dozen things like that, that if you at least educate the buyer up front and let them think about it, they can make the best decision for themselves on how to make their offers stand out. And they're not kind of going through this and seeing it for the first time, like after they found the home that they love. Dude, that is such a great piece of advice for people where you're in competitive markets and you're going to be you know, representing buyers fighting against other people that it's, it's so important to realize it's not just about the money. It's not just about the dollar volume. It's about, sometimes it's about who's buying the house. Other times it's about the speed. You know, every seller would rather sell for $10,000 less this week than wait two months to sell it for $10,000 more. Like there's all those timing factors and then there's risk. You meet people that have had, you know, that their, their escrows have fallen out two or three times. Now they just want one that's going to stick. So being able to go, Hey, I might not be able to offer. And, and then as seller too, we, we see those come in where it's like, Hey, I'm willing to pay 10,000 more than it appraises for if it appraises under, or, Hey, I don't have this. Obviously, you know, sellers like cash buyers quick. Not everybody can be that. So what, so that there's different ways that you can kind of tailor your offer to see it. And then I guess the next step is making sure the listing agent knows because not every listing agent, you know, is educated or is going to know how to represent them. So when you do that, how do you take that offer to that listing agent? Do you make, do you call, do you call them? You make sure that they, they know those extra things you're doing. That they might not notice if they just kind of scroll through it too quick. Yeah, I think that's important. You got you got to have a good summary that where you, you kind of highlight the the offer and sell them the benefit of it. So for our agents, you know, we're telling them to to highlight that there's no contingency for this or or that we've lowered, you know, we've we've only got a 7-day 
appraisal contingency because we have a lender that can turn it around and we've closed a hundred deals with this lender in the last year and a half. Like that, you know, that, that means something. So, so we, we highlight the offer, we highlight the team, right? We highlight the amount of closings that we've done and tell them that, look, our buyer wants this place. The contingencies are, are solid. They're clean. There's going to be less risk to your seller, more certainty to your seller. And our, our team is, you know, known for delivering Our the lenders that we, that we, get our buyers to use are known for delivering. So, so we, you got to sell all that stuff uh, to the listing agent up front. you know, have the lender call them too. that. That's always good. If, if the lender can call and, and uh, you know, sell, sell them if, if they need to. Sometimes, sometimes the lender's reputation is so good that it doesn't matter, but I think it always helps. Yeah. It's, it's helping to know like, Hey, even though this isn't a cash offer, this is as good as cash. We've already done this. We've, we, I, I love getting offers from people like, no, we've, we've already done the full review. We've already gone through tax returns. We can actually close this in, we put 30 days, but we can actually close it in 18 probably, you know, and, and, and we'll work through this and, and all we can change that over. I, I, I love those ideas. The, how many, how many people are in your office? We've got just over 40, Agents now, I think 42 agents and about 35 staff. Some of those are inside sales agents, about six of them. So, so really we've got like 48, close to 50 people in, in sales roles and then another 30 in, in uh, marketing admin support. That seems huge. Are there very many teams that big out in the DC area? There's, there's one other team uh, that, that I know of that's probably close to us in overall size. And then I'd, I'd say after that, the, the, the next biggest team, and I may be wrong, I don't, I don't know them all, but the next biggest one's probably around 25, 30 people yeah. is what I'm guessing. That's, you know, that's got to help you too in that competitive market as you're building. You, know, you have that brand that everybody's standing behind. So the more, more agents you have, the more signs in the yard, even if it's a different you know, agent for that company, uh, that's got to help uh, as you get to grow that. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, five new clients, 60 days. Boom. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys, I am offering this to you. If you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing point. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now, here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single series buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year, step by step. It's like a 12 hour course plus seven other courses. Yes, you heard that right all for a measly 127 bucks a month. If you were to go to Rebus University and buy these courses individually, it costs you over $10,000. But today, if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com, that's futureofrealestatetraining.com, you'll learn what Bill Reek did, which is how to close 100% of the listing points you go on. Quite impressive. And you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered. Yeah, it's like all you can eat bazaar. You go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month. If you can eat all 11 courses in one month, that's all you pay is a buck 97. This is a bargain guys, get it now futureofrealestatetraining.com. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my Outdesk. If you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company, a VA company that specializes in virtual assistants for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators marketing assistants, I'm talking about ISAs, inside sales agents at Prospect, 
thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups. I mean, these guys are trained in this stuff specifically. You're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales. Four out of five of the top teams in the US use my Outdesk for their virtual assistants. And because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week. We're gonna give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled scaling your business with virtual professionals so you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything it's called scaling your business with virtual professionals and you can get it real easy all you got to do is text the word hyban h-i-b-a-n to 31996 that's h-i-b-a-n to 31996 and download your free book scaling your business with virtual professionals and don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book thank you guys and I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my outdesk so the so let's talk about you know the Dan Lesniak that really like is living this epic life Right. So the, so when I met you as an, at, at, at an Ironman camp, you know, we did that race together in St. George. It was a beautiful, it was like a brutal race, the, especially for, for my first one, but you knocked that out. Like it was easy. How many, how many of those races are, are, are you doing right now? The, and then what's, and have you done some other like crazy, you know, other events that are similar? Yeah, I've done six, six full Ironmans, six, I think six halves. And, and then last year I did a 50 mile ultra marathon so just 50 miles of running uh, up and down uh, two different mountains that was that was that was tough <laughs> yeah the that was that is that in the pacific northwest was that like washington yeah or something like that? yeah it was near near mount rainier man so the as you're going through that 50 miler and you're going up and down what were some of those thoughts that were going through your head did you feel like oh, i prepared for this did you did you go into that pain place you had to talk yourself through it and what's what's the driving factor for all that stuff yeah, so it was it was you know up up a mountain like forty five thousand feet of climbing and then back down. That was like the first 25, 26 miles, and then you had to do it again on a di- on a different mountain, uh, similar elevation, and you know it it was it was a challenge doing that living on the east coast because I just I just couldn't get a five thousand you know foot climb anywhere near my house like the, the best I could do is drive an hour hour and a half out to the Appalachian Trail and run up and down that but that was like 2,000 feet of gain and you know you could do it a couple times but that's that's not the same as is going 5,000 all at once like that's so so I, so I couldn't physically simulate it so it really becomes more of a mental game and you know, the, the biggest thing for me was just getting past the halfway point. And, you know, it was, it was brutal going up another mountain after I, you know, essentially had like a marathon in my legs. And those, those are some very, very slow miles. And, um, you know, there just wasn't an easy way, to be honest, it wasn't like an easy way to quit. You, you had had a like, it's not like a road race or an Ironman where there's like support crews and drop tents and all this, like every mile, like, you, you would have had to have gone a few miles uphill or downhill, you know. You're in the middle of the mountains. It's like no yeah, matter what, you're like 20 to, miles. To find uh, like a way to just to quit. So, uh, yeah, it, I mean, there just wasn't like an option in my mind. Um, That's like a know. burning the boat scenario, right? Like no, A we, little we, bit. We yeah. burned the boats. Like we're there. We, there's nothing we could do. You, yeah, you swim a mile out in the ocean. You, the only way back is a mile back in the uh but it should be easier what a what a crazy challenge i remember following you guys on social media as you were doing that and just thinking like what a uh, a crazy way and then even as you described it like you you charged up a mountain and then you ran down and then you had to do it again um so the so you're 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 you know you have you've got these big teams you're active in real estate you're active in business you're a family guy how do you how do you find time to train for that stuff like what what time do you get up what's your what's your your daily routine like 
Yeah, so I'm usually up around 4 a.m. and I, I do uh, about an hour of just reading, uh, journaling, kind of reviewing my goals. Then, I, then I'll usually work for about an hour. Like I'll, I'll dive into some marketing. I'll dive into uh, social media content. I will create marketing emails for the real estate team, our development team, our coaching uh, company. So I, so I do all that usually in the first two hours and then I'll, then I'll usually get my workout in. And by, by the time I'm done with that, usually the kids are up. So I get to spend, you know, I try to spend an hour do, do breakfast with them if I can. And then, you know, I'm usually into the office around nine o'clock, but I've, I've already gotten a good like two hours of work in plus my workout plus family time. Uh, and, and that's, that's, that's really how I, you know, I start earlier than most people probably. And I, I probably don't waste as much time. Like I'm not binging on, you know, Netflix. I'm not, I'm not watching a lot of TV. I think the average I've heard of this, I don't know if it's true, but I've, I've heard it from multiple sources that the average Americans watching five hours of TV a day. So that's like a whole work week, you know, yeah. it's 35 hours in a week. So that's, you know, I, I think there's, I don't know. I think, I think 99% of humans have time to do more. It's just what, what do they choose to do with that time? And I'm not saying watching like you should never watch TV, but I think more people just need to be intentional about how they use their time. And, and I, I'm just very intentional about, about how I use my time. Yeah, you know, the, you and I were at this event in Aspen last week, this Go Abundance Mastermind, and Ed Milet was talking, and the, you know, this high-charging entrepreneur, and he talked about, you know, waking up before everybody else and working so stinking hard. Like, sometimes in life, we have these moments where there's, like, life hacks. Like, this is how you can work more efficiently. This is how you can go live a bigger life. And other times, it's simply about, like, you have to charge harder. You've got to work harder. And so, you know, you're in that super competitive market. So, you're in this season where it's like, no, you got to, to fit it all in. You're super, you got to get up early, you gotta get up early and you got to work hard. And I've seen you doing those things too, where you're on the bike and you're sending emails instead of watching TV. The, uh, you know, one of the, one of my favorite things about, I have a, I have a similar morning routine. I have a similar way to like you know, the hack the days that I, that I work out, you know, ran five or six miles. So it was a light workout, but then coming to work afterward, you, you, you're charging. But one of the cool things that I've seen on yours and you have the same effect uh, at my house is now my daughters are jumping on the treadmill afterward half the time when you're on the bike, like your kids are like on a bike next to you or running next to you. It's like, they see you doing these things and that becomes like family time too, right? So you're like, Hey, by then they're awake. But sometimes that family time is like leading by example. They're doing it alongside there. The, um, what's, uh, you, you know, do you and your wife ever talk about that much? Like the, the example you're setting that, that, you know, your kids start wanting to naturally do that. I mean, they're young, but you could see like, you think, you think they're going to follow in your footsteps with that? Yeah, I think it, I think it definitely helps. Like my, my four and a half year old, you know, I got him this little trainer bike that sits next to mine in the gym and I don't think there's much resistance on it, but it can hook up to his iPad and he can actually pedal and like drive uh, blaze of the monster machines around or right. So that's pretty cool for him. And, and that did translate to him riding a bike at a really young age, like he was riding a bike without, tra without training wheels when he was three years old. And, um, so he's, he's really good on his bike now. And you know, he can like when we're in our neighborhood in Florida, it's, 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 it's more, you know, we got a vacation home down there and it's kind of on a cul-de-sac neighborhood. So there it's pretty safe for him to ride in the street there. And he's actually ridden while I've done, so, you know, like some runs and he'll keep up with me running on his bike. And I think, I think the most he ever did was like three and a half miles, which at, you know, four years old, that's, that's pretty good on a bike. And uh, so I, so I definitely think it helps set the example and, and he, you know, he'll, he'll hop on the treadmill and do like a quarter mile. That's about his max right now. But uh, you know, I, I definitely think, you know, kids, learn by example and the biggest thing that we can do to, to teach them is to to set a good example for what we want them to model and i think that's true with you know our fitness our our relationships our business so i, I try to 
I try to talk to them even, even when they're four, three, two, you know, like really young, I try to talk to them about my goals and all of these different areas and like why I'm doing it. And, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's having an effect, but you know, I'll, 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 I'll see in the future, I guess. But I, I, I think, I think he'll, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he does an Ironman at, at a really young age, it wouldn't shock me. Cause that's, that's what he's seen his dad do for, for several years. So. Right. I mean, I think all of us know that we look up to the people in our life, we copy them, we see what we like, we see what we don't like. And then leaving, you know, when I get to see my daughter jumping off the treadmill, I'm like, that is freaking awesome. But but what you're doing is super inspiring. I I need to take my son to the next level of him to ride the bike so I can go with him. You know, again, the only reason I really want to talk about this first part before we really dive into that nitty gritty is so many people out there, like people listening to this podcast are real estate agents. They're trying to figure out how do they succeed in real estate? How do they succeed in life? How do they become entrepreneurs? Like, what are the secrets? And sometimes that secret, and people are like, but I don't have enough time to do that. And you're like, I don't have enough time to hang out with my kids and exercise and do this and do my own marketing stuff. And like your secret is like, no, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show by example. And some of my kid time might be him riding his bike while I jog. And sometimes it's going to be helping him with or whatever else. So the, um, you were definitely showing that, that the, you know, work hard and the, you know, not see that. Tribeofmillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book, and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate. Was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. Rockstar Nation, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to stay to the end where our guests will be offering a free gift. As you know, all of our guests offer a free gift and all of these gifts can be found on the Agent Success Toolbox. You could find that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply texting the word toolbox to 444 444- 999 that's toolbox to 444999 i am going to put today's free gift in today's show notes but if you want all of them including gifts from most of our guests that have come on the show just go to the agent success toolbox but let's so let's you know change change directions a little bit jump into some of that nitty gritty of real estate right so the as we as we talk about you you know, how many houses have you sold in the last 12 months? What's your, what's your, what's the, what's the volume commissions, that sort of stuff? Yeah. So 2019, we sold 672 homes, I believe. And we were just under 4 million in, uh, in total volume. Wow. And I believe that translated into just over 8 million in gross commission income. So some, some of those deals, by the way, were our own development deals and investment deals. So we weren't getting paid commission on it. So that, of course, affects oh, yeah. uh, that overall number. But yeah, we ended up around $8 million in gross commission. And we took home about 25% of that as net income. That is, that is awesome. So about 600 ish houses, you talked about 500,000, that median income, but some of them were deals you've done where you make, make money. Otherwise they maybe we'll get a chance to talk about how you were able to transition from real estate to that. But you know, you talked a little bit about representing the buyers, you know, earlier. So your teams, your office as a whole, the, are you guys mostly listing agents, mostly buyers agents, or is it everything? We're about probably 62%. I'm guessing um, I may be off by a percent or two, but probably 62% buy side, 38% list. And I, and I really like that ratio because like a lot of, you know, there's a lot of numbers thrown out in real estate and metrics from, from like different books. And, you know, I, I don't know how true they all are, but I know one kind of 
metric that a lot of people hang their hat on is for every listing, you should do two buy sides. And you don't, you don't see a lot of big teams really hit that numbers. Like most big teams, big agents, they end up being like 50, 50 or, or they're like 60, 40 or 75, 25 with, with listings dominating. And I, I really like that we've been able to have an effective buy side. Like I think it's one of the most effective buy side uh, businesses in the industry because I, I feel like if the market ever does shift in our area, which would would take some just crazy event, but if it ever did, I, I just feel like we're very well positioned uh, because because we just really know how to find buyers and find them homes and, and get them under contract. Yeah. The So it probably a lot of that hard work, you know, it's something you like teach to your agents to, to kind of win the day out there and to be confident to go, hey, if this changes, we're well positioned because yeah, there's lots of companies that are, heavy on, you know, all listings, all buyers, agents, you're like, no, we're diversified. If you get listings, maybe you'll have some of your own listings. You know, we had, we had a business that was, we had a real estate company out of California that was based on my wife's brokerage that just sold my own listings, right? We would buy the house, we'd fix them, we'd sell them. And it built up a great income, income stream. And she was so good at being an agent and the broker. And she built up these giant teams and that was an income that our family had. But then as soon as we stopped flipping houses in California, all of a sudden that company that was well established and built, we had not diversified it. We hadn't set it up to be able to also be buyers agents or what if. And so it was a shame because it was like, we had these agents, we had these teams, we had these systems. It was like, well, we do listings. If we're not doing listings anymore, then, uh, you know, then, then have the people go work somewhere else. The, how do you get those, you know, so you've got the two different teams. So what's your best way to get leads, whether it's, whether it's listings or buyer leads. And if you were going to give somebody kind of one tip and one hack to go get a lead, what, where would you send them if you could only have one choice? If you only had one choice, well, it, it kind of depends how you're, you're set up, right? And I think, I think different lead sources are going to work better for different like styles of personality and in different markets and different, and different teams. Our best, uh, our best lead sources tend to be past clients and referrals. And, you know, we've had several years in a row now of closing several hundred people. So we, we just have a huge database to, uh, to stay in touch with, to, to drive those leads and, and we work them hard. So we do a quarterly client event and, uh, like, like this year, it's going to be uh, same as last year. We're going to do a casino night Q1. Baseball game Q2, fall barbecue Q3, Santa brunch Q4. And so we do these client events. We are doing weekly emails. We're doing gifting. So all sorts of stuff to stay in touch with our past clients. And for us, that's, you know, we've got the history. We've got the, the uh, ability to work a big database. So that's, that's our number one lead source. If you're just starting out, you know, it's going to be different. You're not going to have a huge client base to, to go after. And my recommendation is if, if you're a smaller agent, you're just starting out, you maybe don't have a ton of clients or a database to work is to be intentional about your target audience, right? So sit down. I talk about this in my book, this process of STP segmentation, targeting and positioning. So go through and segment your market, pick out a, a it and then position yourself as someone that can add unique value to them. Uh, you know, one example might be like maybe you want to work with expired and withdrawn listings. Well, that's an easy one that's like low cost for a new agent to get good at. You just have to discipline yourself to market to those those people, call those lists every day for you know a couple hours. And like anyone could start off doing that and, and go out and do 10, 20 million their first year. Just not a lot of people have the discipline to actually call those lists for an hour or two days. So if you're starting off and, you know, want a low budget way to, 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 you know, get to a six figure, six figure times two income, even in year one, you know, call expireds and withdrawals, create a whole program around that. Um, but, but, you know, I, I think really figure out what you would enjoy doing, figure out what type of buyers or sellers you want to work with and, and then like kind of put on blinders and, and go deep on that market. 
Yeah. So the, and so if you were giving someone that advice, how long should they expect to stick with it? Like, cause you tell Hey, don't give up before it comes in. It takes a while to get these leads. So the, if someone's doing two hours of calls a day, you know, how long should, you know, how long would you tell them it, it, it takes, you know, where they really have to buckle down and, and not give up? Yeah. So it's, it's not long. Like when you think about how big the rewards can be. So this is the interesting thing about real estate. It is one of the only industries I know where, you don't have to have advanced training, advanced degree. The barrier of entry is super, super low. It, you know, you can for a thousand bucks, maybe two thousand, you can kind of pay for your dues, educations, all that for a year. So, like, very, very low entry when you consider any other business to get into. Um, and, and the rewards are huge. If you do it right, you can get to six figures within a year, which is like the top ten percent of all U.S. incomes. And if you, if you stick with it for a couple of years, anybody can really become a one percenter in terms of like net income. I think you got to You got to be willing to put in like three to six months at least. And that's, this is the, this is where everyone, you know, gets lost. Like they, they'll, they'll, they'll try calling expires for a week or two. doesn't work. They'll try open houses for a week or two. doesn't work. And they just kind of shift around and they're always, changing their focus and not sticking with it long enough. But I, I think you really, you got to give it at least three, but, but, but be prepared to give it six months. And if, if you're willing to do that, you can have pretty much unlimited success in this, in this business. Dude, I love that piece of advice. It's like, you got to be willing to stick with it. You got to choose a niche and, and find that niche that really matches your personality. So that way, I mean, at the beginning you're learning scripts, but it can become natural whether it's people, whether it's like client outreach and, you know, I went to, I got to go see star Wars early because an agent that I knew, you know, has invited all these families to go do it or there's parties or things like that, or that's some, some people's niche or it's, you know, the buyer's agent or the, those expired, like finding something that matches your personality, going after it. And then also just committing. It's the same when people are saying they want to buy their first investment property. They want to list a house. They want to start any sort of business or change any sort of lifestyle out there. It's like commit to a certain amount of time and be willing to dig in and do that. The, do you have a do you have a script that you would share that you would talk through? So if you're calling that first person, it's like, hey, their house didn't sell last week. Like the I know it's probably been years since you've done those calls, but like when you did them, what what was that like? Yeah, well, I've I, I, we use a basic a basic script when when we when we call expireds and withdrawns. It's it's you know, hello, uh, I'm looking for the owner of, and I you know, list the address because I've, I've got it uh, in Mojo or whatever system, dialer system we, we're using. I'm looking for the owner of, you know, 123 Main Street. This is Dan. I'm a local real estate agent. I want to know if, if you would still take a uh, an offer on your house, right? And sometimes they're like, yes or no. Sometimes they don't even know that it's off the market. So they're like, well, what do you mean? It's listed for sale. And you're like, no, the MLS is showing that it's uh, listed as, you know, withdrawn or, or expired because yeah. sometimes, sometimes their agents don't even tell them that that's about to happen. Hey, what a, um, what an opportunity for a lead right there. You're calling saying, Hey, so your so your agent didn't sell your house. It's off the market. Like, no, I already have an agent. We're like, yeah, but your agent, it's not listed right now. Like they gave up and they're like, what? Like, then that means you can hire me now. Like what any, like some of those conversations, like at first it's like people are like afraid to make the call or maybe there's like 10 people making the calls. So you got to be willing to you do it and handle that rejection. But then every once in a while, like that would be the dream call where they're like, what? I thought it was listed. Yeah, like, no, no it, for a week. It, that'll happen. Like if you called for an hour every day, um, you would get at least one of those types every, every day. Um, so af after we get through that part, I, you know, I try to establish timing and motivation, right? So the first questions are establish the timing, basically like, you know, would you still take an offer? Um, and then, then I try to go to motivation. So why are you, why are you trying to sell, you know, your, your house at one, two, three main street? And like, Oh, I want to retire and move to Florida. Okay. If I could get you that offer, how soon would you, you know, want to, want to make the move. Right. So narrowing down on, on, on the timing. And then I'm, then I'm going to close for the appointment and, and kind of bring it all together and, and tell them, look, if I could get you an offer to help get you down to Florida, um, 
you know, would you be willing to, to meet with me for 30 minutes to, to discuss how we can do that and, and do, do a different, you know, job than your previous agent did. And then I, I try to present two different options. Like is this, this afternoon good or would tomorrow be better? Right. So I don't want to say like, are you available for an appointment? I want to and give them like a yes, no option. I want to say, are you available today or tomorrow? <laughs> like, yeah, them, that's great. Right. Yeah, get the yes, get the yes for sure. So those, those are some of the kind of basic principles and, and it, it adapts based on the situation. I, I think a lot of people try to like shove one script at, you know, every situation and, and that just doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta kind of have some basic principles and be willing to adjust and adapt. And, uh, you know, I, I've got some of that, by the way, if, if you go to hyperfasttips.com you can download a hundred strategies and tips from my, my book, the hyper local hyperfast real estate agent. So if you go to hyperfasttips.com, you can, you can see some, some more of those kind of tips, uh, and, and a lot more. That is awesome. We'll put that in the show notes too. the, you know, as your free gift, it sounds like that, that is the one that you give out hyperfasttips.com. People can go get even more of that. Even that advice you just went through. I mean, if you're, again, if you're an agent right now and you're figuring out what's next, like getting to go through and, and re-listen to that script, the idea of committing to that timeline and then having those different ideas as you figure out your niche, your timeline and your goals, what a way to be successful and grow that the, you know, and I'm sure we could talk for another hour about all the stuff you have, but you know, one of the, one of the really fun things I want to talk about. So the, like you and I are, like, we're friends in the normal world. We're friends on social. I get to see all these fun stuff you're doing. And there's times when I see you with videos like interviewing Gary B and you've got Grant Cardone on your shows, or you're doing these, like, you know, these summits where you, you interview different people, all the, you know, the, the millionaire, you know, listing, you know, all the, all the famous people out there. So you're doing so much fun stuff out there. But the what do you have anything fun coming up now? The when's your next like digital summit or in person summit? What do you, what do you got going on for training? Yeah, so a couple of years ago we started to really focus on taking what we're doing on our team and and bringing it to a, a bigger audience and training real estate agents. And we've been doing that through Carrie and I, my wife, been doing that through Hyperfast Agent. Uh, that's that's our our coaching and education and training company. We've we've done two big events, so we we did a. Two years ago, we did a big event with Grant Cardone. Yeah, I saw that. Last, last year, we did it with Ryan Serhant. And this year, we decided to do more than just one event. So we're still going to do the, the, the big hyper-fast sales summit in, in uh, at the end of the year. But yeah, coming up in the spring, we're going to do a boot camp. And it's going to be... Uh, a, a little bit lower key of an event. Like it's, it's not going to be, you know, 12 different speakers like our summit. It's going to be two days in our office and it's going to be training from, you know, myself, Carrie, some of the leaders on our team. And, and we're going to, for two days, like dive into what we do for lead generation. Like we'll, we'll do a panel with our inside sales agents, right? These are the guys on our tele on our phones that are booking you know, they're each booking like four or five appointments a day and there's like six of them, right? So we're, we're getting over a hundred appointments a week, some weeks, uh, they will actually go through like what they do on the phone. So they'll, they'll talk about expireds and withdrawn and how they book those. They'll, they'll talk about what they do with sign calls or, you know, how they handle the person that wants to just see the, the property, the showing, right. And it's how they actually can switch that to a buyer consult appointment. So, like they'll go over that. We'll bring our top listing and buyer agents in to go over how they do the listing presentation, how the, what they do for buyers, you know, all the all the things that we do to win offers and competitive situations. We'll we'll do breakouts for solo uh, agents and team members. We'll and, and team leaders. So you know whether you're starting out or you're like a team leader doing you know over a hundred million. Like there will be a a track and a and a program for you. So that's going to be March 4th and March 5th at our, at our office in Arlington, Virginia. And it's in our office. So limited space. So it's going to be very hands-on, not, not a ton of people at this, like not, it's not going to be like, you know, our summit where it's hundreds of people. It's going to be a very, very small group of people. That sounds freaking awesome, man. That's like drinking from a fire hose for two days. Like get, you know, drink your coffee, show up, take a ton of notes for like every access, uh, you know, every, every aspect of the listing part or the buying part and getting to, to learn from a big team. Yeah, that's got to be great for people that are like have these smaller teams or from other towns where they don't have so many resources to come from. And you're like, 
because because a lot of stuff you're talking about, you're like, you've got a big team, you've got these lists. Well, how do you get there? And now you've got you're going to be sharing some of that that information out there. So you said so that's just coming up then. That's in March. You said March. What were the dates? March fourth and fifth. So the, so what do you what do you charge for somebody to show up to a, an event like that for two days at your office? Oh, yeah, we we should charge a lot more than we are, but we're we're only charging two thousand dollars for that. So the for that that is like pretty that's what's funny, right? So the, you know, we go to a lot of different masterminds now, a lot of different events, things like that. And there was, you know, a, one that I was, that I was, you know, looking at going to, to, it was, it sounded very similar. It would show up for two days. We're going to go through all of your ad copy, your Facebook, stuff like that. There's a $10,000 ticket price, you know, to go to the person. So you've got a $2,000 ticket price. Any agent can come invest in themselves. I mean, it's so, I hate, I hate to ask, but the, I have to for our, for our listeners. So the, can we get, can we get a discount? Can we get like a rebus discount for people to be able to, to get out there? I mean, we've got, a, this will air a couple weeks before that people will be able to, to sign up. How would we do that? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if we'll have space left, but, um, and I, I haven't mentioned this to, to Carrie. So hopefully you're not getting, <laughs> I'm gonna hopefully, get you in trouble. yeah, hopefully you're not getting me in trouble, but, uh, I love, I love the rebus uh, uh, you know, audience and, and being on with you guys. So we'll, 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 we'll create a coupon. Uh, that coupon will be Rebus 500 and, and we'll give, we'll give your uh, listeners $500 off the ticket price. That would be awesome. You know, if you guys are, if you guys are listening out there, I, I promise it's events like this that took me to a whole different level in my expertise in business of, of investing in buying and selling houses. Like so much of it was from that. It was from going out and meeting other people and the, and if you're thinking that that might be an expensive ticket price, that's actually a really inexpensive ticket price. So if you're watching on YouTube, Dan's putting it on the wall behind him. Rebus 500 is the code. What website do they go to? Is that the uh, Hyperfast tips or a different one? Uh, that would be a different one. It's, it's a, a, I think we got it on a bit.ly link. So I'll just write it up here. Bit.ly slash H F A bootcamp. And, and, and Bitly is kind of funny. I, I probably should have just got a vanity URL, but you, you got to get the caps right on that. So it's bit.ly, it. uh, capital HFA, then lowercase bootcamp. All right. bit.ly forward slash HFA, all capitals, bootcamp, all lower. We'll put that as a show link too. So if you're listening to it now, you know, check, check your phone, get that. That sounds like it's a, it's a limited time by the time get, this gets out there. Hopefully there's a few, few seats left for our people to get out there. Be an, a good fun excuse for a trip to, to Washington DC and, uh, and to go you know, see, see what other teams are doing out there. Um, that's awesome. And, and, you know, and if you guys have any of you guys out there that have taken the, you know, Rebus University and sign up for classes. You know, you get to see, you know, Dan's wife's on there teaching classes. The, you know, there's so much stuff. You guys have been involved for a long time with the podcast and, you know, and with the university. So the, that is super awesome. I, you know, I guess my last question as we close this out is like, so other than that, like what's next, what's your, what's your next big adventure? What's that thing you're looking forward to right now? Whether, whether it's a race, whether it's a family thing, whether it's a business thing, what do you, what do you have going on next? Yeah, a lot on, on a ton of different fronts. But one of the things I'm most excited about right now is what we're building out on our investment and development side and platform. And, and this all started by doing like one deal, I think it was like six years ago now. And it's just snowballed into to more. And we're actually converting row homes and apartment buildings into, into condos in D.C., and, you know, we, we've partnered with one amazing builder and, and he's, he's just does a phenomenal job, but we convert these, these buildings into condos, sell them. And it's, it's become a huge, huge, huge business for us. It, it may surpass our real estate business in the next year or so. And we, we've actually, you know, I, I've just kind of been focused and, and heads down and doing this. But I looked up the other day, I realized we've raised like seven million in investor equity because we we raise money for each of these deals and, and pay our investors a fifteen percent preferred return. So they're getting a great uh, return, and and it's in an area, you know, like I mentioned before, at the beginning of the show, like like even if a crash comes, like you know, our area is, is resilient enough to to for these projects to still be successful. And, and that's, this has grown now to, uh, I believe we've got 118 units in the pipeline, which is just 
crazy that's, to like yeah. that's wild like what it's a, just out of like nowhere <laughs> what a fun passion project too like i love rebuilding things right like the and, and everybody's market you know you see all the shows out there so everybody's market has different things they can do and then like you said can, taking those row homes converting them to condos seeing what's out there uh, I can't wait to see more on social media and the other stuff that you're doing. If people want to find you on social, what's your, what's your Instagram handle? What's your Facebook handle? Yeah, the, the hand, the handle is the Dan Lesniak. So that, that works, I believe on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter and uh, yeah, YouTube is the hyper fast agent channel, but, but for my personal accounts, it's the Dan Lesniak. The Dan Lesniak. And I promise if you find Dan on there, the, you're going to be able to find all that other stuff too. He does such a great job at you know, promoting, adding value, teaching agents thing. I mean, it's, it's, it feels like it's every day. You're, you know, he's posting a video about something, about how to, how to grow your business, how to, how to join something, how to do something big. So the Dan, it was super fun catching up today. Thank you. Thank you for the big offer that you gave to all of our listeners today to, get, to go to your boot camp. You know, thanks for always being so supportive and, and getting to come on here and talk about life and family and business and everything else. So the, I had a, a fun time today. We'll have you back again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Always great to uh, catch up with you and always great to be on, on Rebus. Love it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.